Hey guys, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we're studying Matthew 22. We're gonna go back into First Psalms, but first today's Psalms. first. Oh, first Samuel. Samuel. Yeah. But we're we're gonna go back into that. Today's just special, and also today we have our Mimi. Fun Mimi. <laughs> we made her join us today. Yes. Yes. Um. So in the month of March, for the next. I think three Fridays, you're going to see that we're hopping out of 1 Samuel, like John said, and we are reading through the New Testament, and we're preparing our hearts to hear sermons probably on Sundays, uh, probably about Palm Sunday, crucifixion, resurrection. Those are pretty important um, topics to touch on, and so since Easter's coming, we want to read things that prepare our hearts, and I'm assuming that's why the deep dive dives into those chapters on Fridays. But today, um, we are in chapter 22 of Matthew, and we're kind of all over the place. Jesus yes. is preaching hard. Yes. And so, um, we're going to recap some things that stood out to us. We may not cover all of it, just like every other time we recap. Um, so, Jax, get started for us. All right. So, we start off with Jesus telling a parable about a wedding banquet. So, basically, this big wedding I almost said blanket. This big wedding banquet is a picture of heaven. And uh, it says that God is inviting a whole bunch of people to the wedding banquet. Those people A whole are bunch? Everyone. All of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those people are us. But we have a choice of whether or not we get to go to the blank banquet. <laughs> <laughs> this yes. is hard. Words are hard. Yes. We have a choice of whether we get to go or not, and Jesus gives us that choice. Very good. Okay, Mama, so after that. Okay, pretty much after that, um, we find the Pharisees and the Sadducees trying to trick Jesus. First, the Pharisees try to trick Jesus by asking him if um, they should pay money, uh, the imperial tax, to Caesar. Um, knowing full well that if he mm -hmm. says no, that he'll be in trouble with the Roman government. Uh, and, but, of course, Jesus knows that they're trying to trick him and uh, sees right through it and says, show me the coin, the denarius, and says, whose picture is this? And they say Caesar's. So then he tells them, give to Caesar what is Caesar and Caesar's and to God what is God's. Then the Sadducees come later the same day. This is a very busy day in Jesus life <laughs> um, and they come and also try to trick him asking who will be married in heaven which is interesting because they didn't even believe in the resurrection and here again Jesus knew shocker not but um because we know that he knows all um, he knew what they were trying to do and comes back at them telling them that there will be no marriage in heaven and that obviously they don't know their scripture. Mm -hmm. And the people were very surprised at Jesus' teachings and left. So by Felicia. Yes. Okay, <laughs> so let's early. talk about our takeaways. John, what was your takeaway? My takeaway was about how I think it is really great how Jesus just knew the people were lying and talking about you know. He's all powerful. Yes. He's all knowing. And they were trying to trick him and he saw through. He saw their hearts and he knew that their hearts were in the wrong place. I totally agree. Yeah, and if we could trick him, well, what kind of God is that? So he is above all of our trickery mm -hmm. and our wrong motives and our ugliness. Okay, Jax, what was your takeaway? Alright, so my takeaway is very similar to that. Um, so it's about how everyone, they just tried to trick him and get him to slip up, but Jesus, uh, he later proved to them that he is all knowing and all powerful, knowledgeable and wise. And so he bests them at their own game. They tried to play with him and he keeps coming back with, uh, scripture and knowledge. And I think that's really cool. I do too. I love how we can see God's character through the life of Jesus. Mimi, what was your takeaway? Um, I just love how awesome God is through this. Um, that he loves us and he has invited us with our brokenness. He knows our hearts. He knows how stinking horrible we are. And he still loves us and invites us to come 
and I just praise his name that I accepted that invitation. That's right. I agree. So my takeaway today is that I see all these characteristics of Jesus. I see all these characteristics of God through Jesus. And I love that as we read New Testament and we see what Jesus is preaching, um, that not only are these the words that are coming out of his mouth and the, he's not only telling us how to be, but he is living it out. And he is our perfect example of all of this. So here we see the Pharisees ask him and, you know, they're, they're the ones that are uh, super knowledgeable in the law. They know that Old Testament. They know that Torah. And um, they're asking God, what's the greatest commandment? I want to know, you know, and they're trying to trick him. And Jesus replies, and these verses have become so important in our Christian faith. Mm -hmm. To me, I love them, but they're super important to all of us as Wait, can I Christ the followers. First, the first yes, start it. Love the Lord with all your heart and all your um, soul, with all your mind. And this is the first and greatest commandment, Jesus said. And then he said, the second is like this. Love, love your neighbor, your neighbor love as your yourself. Neighbor. So what's the easiest way to sum that up? To love God and to love people. And so the Pharisees, being experts in the law, they were constantly trying to catch Jesus doing something wrong, getting his answers wrong. And this proves that sadly they don't know Jesus at all. Jesus' reply right here is the fulfillment of all of the law. They couldn't trick him with what they knew about the Old Testament because the Old Testament and the Ten Commandments that these Pharisees were supposedly experts at, these two commands that Jesus just gave cover all of these things. The first five commandments are all covered in the command to love God. All the first five commandments are talking about our hearts with God. Don't have idols. Don't have other gods before him. Don't take his name in vain. Um, all of those first five commandments. And then the second five are covered in the second thing, love God others love god love others they're all covered that talks about our relationship with our parents our relationship with our spouse um our relationship as family and as people and so throughout the new testament this is basically what we're seeing jesus preach in many many different ways in this chapter today this is all covered by these verses we see the first part what jack's recapped the parable about the wedding banquet um, that is God's invitation for us to all know him and have a relationship with him. That's him wanting us to love God. That's him wanting us to love him. And then the rest of the chapter, we see Jesus interacting with all these people. And these weren't just any any old people. These weren't his pals and his friends. These could be probably characterized as enemies, mm -hmm. don't y'all think? These are people who are against Jesus and who do not want what's best for Jesus. And Jesus lives out these very things that he's preaching by loving these people, every single one that he comes in contact with, even his enemies. So sometimes as we follow Christ, we study the Bible, you know, we deep dive week in and week out, day in and day out. Sometimes maybe it can feel overwhelming, especially if you're in those Old Testament sections of laws and how many animals to sacrifice. Things that, that thankfully because of Jesus, they don't apply to us anymore. But sometimes it can get overwhelming. But what's really helpful for me to remember is what Jesus said in the scripture that we read today. And loving God, following God is all about loving God and loving people. And my God shot is that Jesus' life, when in doubt, look to Jesus. Look to his life because his life was the perfect example of that. So today's challenge I think it's super important for us to hide God's word in, in our hearts. We're reading every single day, so that's what we're doing. But when we commit scripture to memory, we get to um, we get the Holy Spirit to be able to pull those things out of out of our hearts that we've hidden in our hearts at just the right times. Times we don't even know. Sometimes I have I've realized like scripture would pop into my mind at the perfect time for me to have the perfect response to someone, and that's because. God's word is hidden in our hearts. So today, I would like us to memorize those scriptures, verses 37, 38, and 39, that say, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And so let's try to memorize that, and let's also pray to ask God 
to help us live this out in real life. Not just to memorize the words that he said, but to actually live this out, put this into practice for us to love God and to love others. All right, friends, we had fun in Matthew 22. <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. We'll be back in 1 Samuel. Bye. Bye.